guys, can you please just take out your lesson plans so as I hand it out yesterday? Alrighty then. So today we'll be dealing with the kinesphere. Um, the kinesphere refers to the space within a person's reach, his or her own personal space. It is the furthest, furthest point uh, that he or she can reach while remaining stationary. So, you guys get it, looks right. Okay, great. So then, um, the body's length axis with and depth axis are the means in which the body can explore its kind of its, 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 its sphere. So if you refer to your page, you will see the image. Well, those of you that actually have it. Are there any questions? So you see also? So you're telling okay. the kind of sphere. What do you understand from the kind of sphere? The kinesphere refers to the space within a person's reach. He is a host's own personal space. It is the furthest point which he or she can reach while remaining stationary. The kinesphere can be compared to a personal bubble that constantly surrounds the body. So. Moving right along. Are there any questions? Does everybody know that what was supposed to be for the assignment? Yes. Can you please repeat it again? I've repeated it twice. Well, they are talking about a dictator. Well, it depends. If you come ready, unlike my class, then yes, they probably will. Wait. Where is it there? I do not own your timetable, so please find out from your peers. Um, today, is the gentleman, that is it for me today. Why are you finding it so hard to understand? Because it's not in my own language, like I'm Afrikaans, and I don't always understand the English words. And then, like I lose interest, and yeah, that's why I don't know anything that's going on in all my classes. My only problem is like, it irritates me when the lecturers just stand in front, like spewing a bunch of information at us, because they don't substantiate or explain it. They just read from papers and then they expect us to understand. Yeah. So I understand you. How about you? I'm just here for the water pump, right? But what about the, what about the clocks? You see the other issue, there's nothing to do with the chain. It's staying the same. Then how are you going to find out what to do? These classes are boring. I'm just going to use the clock for standing up. And if you don't understand? <coughs> Some terminology of the pedagogy of the oppressed. We can see that we have humanization, dehumanization, the struggle, liberation, charity and generosity inside of the oppressed, uh, sub-oppression as well as ownership. Um, when we look at humanization, humanization deals with the concept of Ubuntu and dehumanization reverts to the opposite of that. The struggle is where um, it speaks about how nobody liberates anybody else and nobody, nobody liberates themselves. And liberation emphasizes the fact that both oppressed and the oppressor need to be liberated, but one cannot liberate the other if they don't liberate themselves. It sounds like a lot of gibberish, but it actually does make sense. And then there's char charity and generosity, where the society places uh, a person in a box. As you can see, a class setup is the box situation. And then in spite of, in spite of the oppressed, it's, reali it's, re it's realizing their own suffering and understanding the mechanism of the suffering. And then we have the sub-oppressors. So then with that, with the video that we've take it, taken, we, it, we've identified that it deals more heavily with humanization and dehumanization and the struggle. Whereas um, the act of the teacher being in front of the students and actually not giving them the opportunity to voice out or to answer their questions in the manner in which they, um, the questions that they've actually asked shows that this makes them less than human. It just puts 
the teacher in a, in a higher level and level of oppression, whereas the work just needs to be done in the manner that it needs to be done, and that is it. So, yeah, and the struggle is, like I repeat that, where even if we recognize the oppression and we find a need to be free, but no one can really be liberated unless See the students, anybody um, on campus with themselves. different backgrounds and different cultures and that study different stuff. We got the overview that they all felt the same about they never be they never being taught in their own own indigenous knowledge like um Sorry, it's just better for me to explain Afrikaans and it links with what, what we're talking about. So, um, this is just as I in Afrikaans geleer word where wat in die klas aangaan, dan verstaan ek soveel beter, as wat het net groot Engelse woorde van die Europeerse geschiedenis en die Europeerse wat ook al, of Amerikaanse wat ook al, um, in ons keel afgedrukt word, dan verstaan ek net beter wat aangaan as ek het in Afrikaans een woord krijg wat die selte beteken as wat ek in Engels klas krij en oor Europese goed moet leer wat niks te doen het met my geschiedenis en met my land nie. Um, ja. And this also speaks back to the idea that yes, she spoke her Afrikaans. Na ming ya fi zuwuti nkul mi zulu saim wuz en wazi wuti to explain what some things, some terminologies, they actually make more sense in my language. Had it been brought back home, for instance, in our indigenous, like uh, the, the topic that they've been handling, kinesphere, it's like surrounding. So if we had a, a similar word in that, in Zulu, for instance, then I would know better that it's the area, yindao e ela, that's reachable, nge sandla sako, nge nyao lako, nge surrounding yako. So, Basically, it would speak back to how if I could relate to it more, then I would be able to have a more interaction, a clearer interaction, and more understanding in the manner in which the class could be. This is how the strategies of the TIE then was applied to the scene. So, firstly, the teacher gave the class, but this time she didn't just throw the class with the information. She actually asked the class to join in front in a space where she could show them what she was teaching them. So she became the teacher and actor. And then in the second place, the class wasn't just sitting there taking the information. They were coming to the front and actively engaged with what they were being taught. So they became the participants of the class. So then there isn't much chance for them to like be distracted by phones, whatever, because they are engaging with the teacher in the same space. So today I'd like us to conduct the lecture in a very different way. So please step number one, put away your phones, put away your laptops, put away your lollipop, and come join me in a circle over here. Come guys, come, 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 come. come. So today we'll be dealing with the topic of the kindness here. So how we can understand is that a tiny sphere, I don't know if maybe you guys would like to think of it in your own languages, when you are reaching into space, the area that if you could just just reach into space for me, just reach into space for me, and so this is what a tiny sphere is, the area in which, the point in which you can reach, immediately reach into. So if you can maybe think about that in your own languages, what, how would you refer that to? So, you have, um, <coughs> so are you saying that this is beyond the kinesphere? Yes, this is a, it's a bit beyond, this is your immediate kinesphere. And then if, if it comes, if you, the more you extend, the further out you reach into your kinesphere. But your kinesphere is a point of So, have you ever considered thinking about it in your own languages? I feel like it might be, when I think about it in my head, I think about it in Afrikaans, for example, but I do understand it in English context. So it's it's the space that your body occupies. Nice. And I think when we have like, been taught in English for so long, everything I do, I treat in English, I think in English. <laughs> so, I, I don't know, that would be a nice challenge. Okay. I don't know, like, What helped me to understand it was to get out of this space and actually do it self. So I didn't even need you to talk English to me or any language. It just by showing on me where it is and where it is, I could understand it. Instead of just reading the theory all the time, because obviously you have knowledge in your head and you know what you're reading. 
to us. But it's the first time we're hearing it. So then I think sometimes teachers tend to think that because they're already aware of what they're teaching us, less or little explanation is required because they already know what's happening and they don't realize that they actually have to convey it to us in a way that we understand it. And I'm somebody who also learns far better with things like pictures, for example, or if you're telling me how to do things with my body, especially a, a practices subject like this. So. Okay, so this just shows that um, the body is a language on its own and you don't have to speak the same language but you can just show and you actually understand it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs>